I'm Riley Chow, back with Tony Ruiz, Charlie Bright, and Rob Lacuria, and we're going to be talking about the limited and anthology categories at the Emmys this year. Uh, they are now officially slash anthology in the official terminology, so stuff like uh, The Twilight Zone will be competing in the limited categories instead of drama. The limited categories are always fun because they have so few slots, but it seems like they have the same number of contenders as the other categories, or perhaps more. The difference is there's not just tons of random limited series airing on network TV. Uh, so everything that airs that's a limited series is pretty much in contention and they usually play them in the spring. So that they're the last thing that the Emmy voters see. Uh, Tony, what have you been watching lately in terms of limited series? Um, well, first I just wanna say the fact that this is still currently at five it's crazy. nominees only is insane. I'm like, really? I mean, it's bad enough that the SAGs won't have an ensemble category for limited series, which is another, that's a completely another Well, uh, we've got fest. five for limited series and we have five for TV movie. <laughs> yeah, let's right. combine. Right, because combine those things are equal. Yeah. Um, um, uh, to me, the most, one of the most surprising things uh, that I've seen in a long time is uh, is the HBO Max series uh, It's a Sin, uh, which is from Russell T Davies, um, who was behind you know the revival of Doctor Who and Torchwood and and created the original UK uh, Queer as Folk, um, and he's all he's you know one of the things that I didn't expect from this show um, it's it basically covers the the rise of the rise of the AIDS crisis in the 1980s London. And um, I, I don't know why it, it struck such a chord with me. It, it's, it does so many things so well. It's, it's quite funny. Uh, it's, it's quite hilariously funny and irreverent. Um, it's sexy. It's, um, and, and just punches you in the gut uh, when you don't see it coming. Uh, it's got a just an absolutely brilliant uh, lead performance uh, by Ali Alexander, um, and just some really dynamic performances from uh, people you may have seen before. Um, uh, Neil Patrick Harris has a really strong performance in the first episode, um, and Stephen Fry and uh, Lydia West, who was uh, is is a rising kind of a rising star. Uh, was in Russell T Davies' previous series, uh, Years and Years. Um, it's a, it's just a wonderful uh, surprise to me, and um, I think it, it, it deserves a lot more attention. It's getting almost near universal uh, acclaim critically, um, so I really hope that that uh, makes a big splash uh, in these limited series categories. Uh, I've been watching quite a few limited series and uh I, i've been uh i was very taken by the queen's gambit as uh, I, practically everyone and their mother was uh i also uh binged in one day all of i may destroy you uh which was uh in which was very very good uh, um i'm and i think those are and i think those along with it's a sin are very are are primed to do very well what i think is going to be interesting with this uh, uh, with this category, though, specifically, is because of what Tony was saying that, you know, there are only five slots in there. I think we're going to get some very, very surprising snubs in here. And I just don't, and I just don't know who it might be. Could, right now, I, I don't have Small Axe getting in. Uh, I do have WandaVision getting in. I don't have, but I don't have the Underground Railroad getting in. There's a lot of moving pieces here that, you know, we're just, you know, we're just, you know, trying to figure out what fits. Hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Um, I will say, I think I May Destroy You was like a 10 out of 10 A plus. And so I expect and hope that it will make it in um, all across the board, um, particularly uh, we're, we're, we're a few years now past the Me Too movement, 
and, and it has changed and evolved over time. And now we are really having very uncomfortable and necessary conversations about consent. We're certainly having them here in Australia. We're, they're very much having them in the UK and they're also having them in the US and Canada. So I, I'm hoping that that will also propel that, that series to great heights at the Emmys, apart from the fact that it is so well written and so well directed and so well acted. It's just one of the best things I've ever seen. So, I, and, and I'm not trying not to be hyperbolic about this. I, I really, really loved it. On the other hand, I will say, I will admit that the Queen's Gambit didn't quite work for me. And I think that is because expectations were so high. I saved it until the very last minute because I was busy doing other things and watching other things. I finally watched it. And I, to me, it was like, oh, I was expecting more. It was very good. I just didn't love it. I expect it will do very well though at the Emmys, like it has across the board. And 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 fine, that's fine. I, I wanted to mention a few shows while I've got your attention. Uh, the Undoing has done quite well at the awards so far, and I hope that it's not going to be too late for it to uh, finally do well at the Emmys. I know for a fact that HBO will be pushing that very hard. Um, yeah, I, and I loved that. I thought that was really really well done. It's it's a more of a pulp kind of pulpy, kind of schlocky, uh, you know, thriller, but I thought it was just beautifully done by uh, Susanna Beer and, uh, and the Emmys do like her, remember. There's also um, um, The Haunting of Bly Manor. I hope that might do well to make up for uh, what happened to the previous inter iteration of The Haunting series. And, um, and I also really love Euphoria and hope that it will um, do well in this field for its special. And finally, if my, probably my second favourite limited series of the year, by, apart from I May Destroy You, was The Comey Rule. I lapped that up like just like a treat, like a kid in a candy store. I loved every single moment of it. And I'm hoping that we see some nominations for at least for its actors and particularly Brennan Gleeson playing twice impeached insurrectionist in chief Donald J. Trump. Yeah, Charlie mentioned how competitive these categories are and the major snubs. And I am predicting both Nicole Kidman and Kate Winslet to miss lead actress. Uh, just because, yeah, there are only five slots. I think we definitely have to have I May Destroy You and The Queen's Gambit in there. I also have WandaVision. Um, I've got Cynthia Erivo. And I've got Zendaya, who won over in drama last year. So I just had no space for Nicole Kidman or Kate Winslet. I also have Nicole Kidman missing. Wow. Um, yeah, that's certainly possible, isn't it? Which would be a shame. I thought she was so good in that. I mean, she's not doing anything that she hasn't really done before, and that's probably a good argument for why the voters might overlook her. Um, I actually have obviously haven't seen Genius Aretha yet, but from first glimpse of the trailer, I had a quick thought in my head that is she slightly is Cynthia Erivo the wonderful Cynthia Erivo? Is she slightly miscast as Aretha? I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping not. I, I'm going to watch it. Um, I'm going to be on the edge of my seat watching that one because I think it would be really quite compelling to watch a story about the great Aretha Franklin, but I just don't really buy Cynthia Erivo being a contender yet, and hopefully that might change. Underground Railroad as well has so much pedigree behind it that um, you, you, you would think that that would actually be doing better than probably a lot of us pundits are giving it credit for right now. I think we just haven't seen it. Uh, yeah. And then we also have other shows like Inventing Anna or Simply Halston that we don't really know if they're going to air in time. Uh, we assume that Netflix will throw them out, you know, at the last minute, but who knows. I would also throw out The Good Lord Bird, which was really, really good on Showtime. Uh, Ethan Hawke is looking like he could very well uh, uh, get nominated and possibly be a top tier contender uh, in the lead actor category. Um, it's had it's had a rocky... Uh, uh, wrote it only got in for Ethan Hawke at the Globes and then it and then it only got two supporting actors and a critic's choice um, but I really hope uh, that Showtime uh, along with the Comey rule is pushing uh, that as well because that was a real that was a real delight yeah oh, can I mention as well um, Hamilton uh, we're expecting will uh, do quite well in the acting categories in this field. It's uh, Riley. Is it not in limited series? Oh, sorry, movie. Is it in movie uh, or or any? No, other it's reserve? a variety special. Right, but then of course the actors will will um, be um, eligible here in the in the acting categories, and so we should hopefully see 
um, you know, people like Dede Diggs and Leslie Odom Jr. and maybe Lynn Mel Miranda and Renee, Renee Lee Goldsbury and Philip Sue actually contending. That would be amazing. Oh, that would just be so great if that was even possible. I just don't know whether the Emmys will go for it or not. What do you guys think? I think they'll go. I think they'll go for it. There's the, 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 they'll eat that up. And, they will and the eat Emmys that up be- more than it ever deserves to be. <laughs> yeah, and the Emmys have done, the Emmys have done that before. You know, they they nominated you know Emma Thompson for uh, a concert performance of Sweeney Todd. Uh, Robert Morse won Best Actor in a movie mini uh, in 1989 for a state or maybe it was 91. I can't remember. It was 91. Um, 91 uh, for a stage performance of uh, his one man show on Broadway about True. Truman Capote. Um, you know, the other one we haven't necessarily talked about is Emmy favorite Brian Cranston. Um, yeah. You know, Your Honor. You know, it's it's right in his wheelhouse of, you know, the the conflicted, morally ambiguous, uh, seemingly good person who's driven by extraordinary circumstances to do terrible things. Um, made him one of the two all time uh, winners for best actor in a drama. Um, four wins for Breaking Bad, and uh, he could easily return um, yeah. for that. That's a really good point. And also- Yeah, Don Showtime Don... has a really packed slate this year, actually. They do, this. don't they? Which is nice for a change, actually. Yeah. I hope that's well. Um, John Boyega was, is probably the favorite at the moment in supporting actor. He won the Critics' Choice <laughs> and the Golden Globe. Um, and also in the on the actress side, I was, hoping that we will see someone like Hunter Schaefer from U- Euphoria. Um, it'd be great to get a bit of representation uh, by trans actors. And uh, and she's just absolutely phenomenal in Euphoria and should have been nominated for the first season um, in the drama categories. And finally, I would also want to mention that, um, you know, I just think Mariel Heller in The Queen's Gambit was the best thing about that show for me and uh, I'm, I'm expecting that she will also um, be nominated uh, which would be really cool that'd be a really cool thing to see. You mentioned John Boyega winning the Critics Choice Award and he actually won in lead. Uh, we actually don't know where he's going to submit for the Emmys. He tried to submit in lead for the Golden Globes but they have different rules there so he's forced over to supporting. We don't know what they're going to do for the Emmys. Uh, and would, then uh, he's only in one uh yeah in one of the small x movies right yeah so would he i'm just do you know if he would be nominated uh as just from small x or would it be the specific film that he's that he's in yeah so they've uh changed how they're uh counting anthologies so now it would just be as small x cool uh and then we have Bill Camp also in that supporting category, and we have Neil Patrick Harris for It's a Sin, but neither of them is actually in their miniseries very much, so we could actually see both of them disqualified for not being in 5%. I will say, though, that Bill, that, that Bill Camp nod at SAG is, like, that sticks out so big to me, just like, just like Julia Garner did uh, a couple of years ago when she got in. Um, I... I, I that just makes me think like not only it, it, you know it, it it will be it he has to keep his name in the conversation because yeah he's only in like the, the first episode and maybe like a little bit and then in flashbacks and other episodes but i but you know if he could get in he's going to be a very big threat to win i would also i would also add um i think i think neil patrick harris is um would would probably qualify um, you know, I can't, I don't want to say too much if you haven't seen it because it would be a spoiler. Um, but he, he, he does have a really large, uh, arc in the first episode in terms of screen time. Um, the real, I think, supporting performance, uh, the re- real scene stealer is, uh, a young actor named, uh, Callum Scott Howells, um, who's a young Welsh actor who plays this kind of, you know, introverted uh, young gay Welsh kid who falls into this group of friends that's a central thing. And he steals every scene. He's just so earnest and, and lovable and funny. Um, it, it's, a, it's a glorious, um, and he's, he's receiving you know, so much critical acclaim as kind of like the breakout star 
of this series. So I really hope he gets some recognition. Um, if we're throwing out names, if you don't mind, um, I think uh, someone who missed out from the undoing for all the other awards, who, who, who could actually make it into supporting is Noma Dimizweni, who plays the mm -hmm. lawyer. Uh, she's phenomenal. And again, I know HBO are really hoping that she that they'll get more um, attention to her. Also, there's, a, there's an Australian um, series that um, aired in America called Stateless, which has um, Yvonne Shrovsky and Kate Blanchett. That actually might She's make very good. Really brilliant. And finally, if, if for nobody else, could we please maybe see a nomination for Tania Miller, who is in The Haunting of Bly Manor? She is absolutely phenomenal, particularly in her episode. I think that's episode five. I really highly recommend you all watch The Haunting of Bly Manor. It's really well done. And she is just mind-blowing. I would also say from Stateless as well, I thought Jai Courtney was very good in that. And I would, uh, yeah. seeing him in here would be very good as well. Yeah. Yeah, I actually don't have uh, It's a Sin in the series category or in any of the acting categories, but it's just a stacked field. Uh, that's how it is. Uh, what is less stacked is the movie category. Uh, we also had a couple contenders that we have since taken out. Uh, in the prediction center. So you can no longer predict euphoria or what the constitution means to me. So at the top of our odds, we've got Sylvie's love, Uncle Frank, Christmas on the square, the Mahalia Jackson story and an American pickle. And uh, an American pickle might not even be submitted since it's you know a movie on HBO Max. Uh, are they going to enter it for the Emmys or are they just going to ignore it like Netflix does with most of their movies? Uh, that's the state of that race. It's uh, really thin, isn't it? It's just yeah, this the, the state. The state of the state of that race can be encapsulated in four words: Wendy Williams, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I mean, just should it. I move that up to number two? Maybe. Stop! Just this is this category needs to go. It needs to be combined and just give them eight contenders. So yeah. Christmas on the Square. We all love Dolly Parton, but really? <laughs> well, now she's going to have an Emmy. Uh, once again, FX. She uh, deserves all of it. What's that? She deserves all of it. Yes, yeah, she does. Uh, once again, FX decided to burn off a three-hour miniseries on a single night so that they could qualify in this category. So we've got Black Narcissus. Um, Okay. We've got Doctor Who aired an episode, so now they're a movie. Uh, yeah, Godmothered on Disney Plus. Uh, what's seven five zero zero with um, Joseph Gordon Lovett? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what that is. yeah. I should check it out. I like him. But other than that, <laughs> sorry, I just fell asleep. Isn't it amazing how the how you know the how that category has evolved or devolved as the case may be uh, from what really was, I think at the height in the, in the late eighties and throughout like the early to mid nineties really was, that was the hallmark of, of great television with some of those television movies. And now it's a category full of hallmark movies. <laughs> Good times. <laughs>